I'm Dave. Thanks for checking out Kotaku Bonsai. So it's January 21st, and you're probably thinking about repotting season just like I am. And uh, this is pretty much we're getting into the time to uh, get busy with repotting, checking roots, uh, and uh, taking advantage of uh, that work as spring starts to arrive. And so I'm going to do kind of my first repotting of the season with my three sisters here. These are uh, Japanese white pines. I bought these three trees years ago, probably uh, six or seven years ago, maybe longer. And they've been in these uh, flower pots just to basically thicken the trunk. Uh, I'm gonna use that excuse, but frankly, pines and especially white pines kind of scare me. I, I'm not as proficient in pines as I am in other deciduous and maple species. So I kind of, I bought these trees, I put them in these pots just so that they could, you know, thicken the trunk and I kind of just admire them and forgot about them. So I figure it's time I should try to challenge myself to step up my game and uh, make some progress, challenge myself a little bit. And so coming up into, uh, uh, towards the end of January, 2023, you know, this is a good time to, uh, to do that. So. What I'm going to do is repot them. I have three bon bonsai training pots. Got them on Amazon. They're fairly large, um, but they're they're nothing super special. But at least they'll they'll all be in the same style pot. I like that kind of consistency. And over the years, maybe we'll figure out a different uh, ceramic pot to put them each in, different characteristics or something like that. But for now, we're going to keep uniformity. And uh, so I'm going to repot them today and I'll, I'll style them either today or tomorrow or maybe down the road a little bit longer. But this will be kind of a one-two series where we're gonna get them out of these flower pots. We're gonna get them into these and then we'll style them further. So let me show you what, we're, what we've got going on here. So here they are. They're really pretty trees. And I really hope that I can do well styling them into something you know really pleasing but just one at a time here they've been thickening up over the last couple years this one i did lop the top off right there you can see that i lopped that off a couple years ago because i just didn't know what to do i didn't really want it to get 10 feet tall kind of same thing with this guy I did make a big cut here, but this is pretty much the leader. I love how that trunk is getting really thick. However, this root obviously is gonna be a sacrificial root. It's really uh, cutting up the nabari there. This guy is leaning quite heavily in the pot, but if I spin it around, I did wire this guy, I wired the trunk over the last couple of years. So that's that's got potential there. This one has very long leaves, needles, compared to this one and that one. And so I don't know what genetics this guy got that just made her, I guess, her have such long needles. But I just call them the three sisters. Actually, I do have triplet female cousins in my family, so it's not too foreign. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to get these guys into some pots here momentarily. These are the pots I got. I've already put the mesh down in here previously. This mesh here, obviously you can see that these pots have their own built-in screens, but I do like to use more mesh. This stuff here, believe it or not, I got that at the dollar store and it's the material that they sell to put in the bottom of your drawers so things don't slip around. Um, it works for me. I know there's fancier stuff out there, but I got a roll of that for a buck and I've used it for the last three years or so, and I still have plenty more to go. So if uh, for the newbies, um, what we're going to do is get each tree subsequently out of its pot. We're gonna comb the roots out a little bit to expose hopefully some nabari, but I don't want to bare root them. We need the mycorrhiza that are that's in the soil. That's a 
symbiotic beneficial fungus. And we need that to stick around in the root ball and into the new pot. So you don't want to just comb this through to bare roots. We're going to take, when we take each tree out, we'll have a, a fair amount of its, of its substrate that goes into the new pots. We're going to anchor them down with some wire and build up uh, more substrate, which I have just around the corner is some bonsai substrate. I think that's from Bonsai Jack. And I got that in like a 50 pound bag. So it should be enough for three trees here. So we'll get started. So I've laid out a bench to be working outside and it's cold. It's not terribly cold, but uh, it's gray and overcast. Thankfully, it's not too windy. So this will be okay for the next hour or two. I like doing this um, where we can accomplish several tasks at once fairly efficiently. Um, bonsai, of course, is an art form. It's not mass production or it's not, uh, uh, um, what's the right word? It's not an assembly line type of thing. However, here we are. We've got our three trees, three pots. We got wire to fit all of them, uh, to anchor them in. And we can accomplish repotting of these three pretty efficiently and uh, move on to the styling phase. So I think what we'll do, let's get the first one out here. There it is. Let's give you a little bit of a close up. It's really healthy. I'm not seeing like the super bright white root tips. However, it's very vigorous. And this is a very, very happy, uh, very happy tree. Now, like I showed you before, this, this root is quite ugly. It's sticking out. It's not going to work in our design. But I think I'm going to leave it for right now. Uh, down the road, we can certainly cut that off. But I think right now, it, it is a thick root. And it's going to provide a thickening aspect to the trunk. And so if we just leave it, I think we'll get a thicker trunk even faster. And then we can cut it off down the road. So I have a two-pronged rake. And I also have a smaller three-pronged rake. And so we're going to, I'm going to try to reduce the substrate in here by about, you know, 45, 50%. We'll get it in the pot, tie it down with some wire. Uh, and of course, we're going to put in new substrate uh, below it and pack it in around with a chopstick. Here's what we got so far. There's plenty of substrate still in there. And actually, as Nigel Saunders would always say, radial root spread, right? For the Nabari. Yeah, this guy's gonna have to go eventually, but this is nice. There's a lot of potential. And over the years, this could really turn out to be um, pretty, 
specimen. I'm gonna get rid of some of the, the larger boots, um, but it's gonna fit in the pot nicely, I think. So I'm just gonna go through, trim some of the, the very large roots, and then we're gonna get it in the pot. So I just did a test fit of the tree into the new pot, and I think it's gonna look really nice. Um, it's gonna be slightly snug in this direction. It's got plenty of room here. Just a tiny little bit snug right there, which is fine. I'd like to have it packed in pretty tightly. And actually the thickness or the height that this tree sits at currently matches this pot very nicely. So, so far, one out of three, this is working out pretty well. Now I've got my some wire, wire cutters. I'm gonna cut some length of this wire, put it up through the holes in the bottom so that we can anchor our tree into the pot. We're gonna put in some substrate, anchor the tree down, and then fill in all the little nooks and crannies so that any uh, air gaps or air pockets are filled up with substrate. So we've got our pot prepared with a drainage mesh, with anchoring wires, and we're ready to go. I have uh, my substrate here, which I'll just put a scoop down on the bottom to cover the mesh. A little more. It's nice to get your hands in the dirt, in the soil. It's not quite springtime yet, but it's coming soon, so it feels good. Let's do a test fit. Now, generally, the tree is never going to sit directly in the center of your pot. It's going to be offset depending on the size, the style, the movement. So here we are just a little offset onto what I'll call the right side. But it sits wonderfully in there. Okay, you can see on the bottom, you know, it was starting to dig into the substrate there. So it's got caught up on the bottom of the root ball. So I think what I'm going to do is just mound up a little more so that the root ball will sit on a slightly raised mound of substrate. Right through there. We're gonna work this guy right back onto that mound. A little back and forth, a little rotation. And get him really nice and Snug.
Maybe a little over further right. Okay. I like that. This is going to be nice. Okay. So what we'll do is we're going to use our, our anchoring wires. There's four of them. I'm going to pass them through to create roughly an X and then snug down the wires, twist them together so that the tree is anchored firmly into the pot. And then we're going to fill substrate around all four sides and work it down into the roots with a chopstick. So it's anchored down into the pot. It's very secure. I hid the wires as best I could, at least uh, put them flush against the root ball. On this side too, right here, you can, can't even really see that one. And they'll be covered up by the substrate, hopefully, so that, you know, it, it won't distract from the composition. So now that the tree is very secure to the pot, we're just gonna go ahead and fill in uh, the substrate around here and work it in.
So what do you think of that? There's our first one. It's nice and uh, mounded up. I'll change the camera angle so you can see it a little differently, but I really like how it's sitting in there. I think over the next couple of years, as this maybe develops the Nabari out further, uh, some moss that comes up the, the trunk, that would be beautiful. Um, but this is nice. I like this. So it's mounded up, but there is a little bit of a lip so the water doesn't drain right over the edge. And I'll kind of refine that as we go, but I think this is a great start. Pretty. This guy has not seen any wiring. So that'll be the new thing for this year. But I think this is going to make for a really pretty composition. There you go. We still got two more to go. How about that? There's number two. This guy, for whatever reason, decided to lean so heavily in this pot. So we're going to have to, uh, you know, wire it down in such a way that keeps it upright. But it's pretty. It's really, it's a lovely tree. Same process. We're going to get it out of this flower pot. We're going to comb the roots out. We're going to get the wires in our pot to anchor the tree. We're going to pack it in and fill it up. So here we go for number two. You can see how this tree definitely developed uh, a lean to the side, which is not a problem. And there's, of course, bonsai styles of windswept or, you know, semi-cascade or uh, that have the, uh, quite a lean to it. But I don't really want this Japanese white pine to be leaning too heavily. You know, it, it's still got that fairly formal upright S-curve. And I, I'd like to preserve that you know, as much as possible, which just means when we put it in the pot, this side here is going to be leveled up quite substantially in order to make it sit fairly upright. And I'm going to have to, over time, make sure that the nabari is responding well and, and coming out in a radial, more horizontal fashion rather than some steep angles like it has right now. So that, that'll be the thing to watch out for on this guy in the years to come. But uh, I like him. I like it her, to him, whatever, whatever you want to call him, for what, what it is. So I'm going to prepare the pot and we'll get this guy going too.
Okay, so I've got it anchored down to the pot. Let me put the turntable up down underneath. Go for a spin. So I like this tree and certainly I'm gonna keep it and work with it, but it, it is a little challenging. And so the angle that it's sitting at and the, the size of the root ball and the way the root ball has some asymmetry to it, it doesn't really, I can't get the front, which let's call this the front right there. Let's call that the front. It doesn't exactly kind of line up with the, the front face of the pot. It's slightly off to the side, which you know what, all the rest of my trees are a little goofy in one way or another. So it's not gonna be a big deal, but it's, not exactly what I would shoot for, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and cut off the excess pieces of wire here. You know, I'm taking my time with this so I can demonstrate and show you guys what I'm doing, but typically, you know, you could fly through this process pretty fast if you have any experience. Because, you know, you might have a lot of trees to, to get repotted this, this uh, coming spring. And so, you know, you don't want to spend weeks and weeks and weeks doing it. You want to kind of rip through it. So here we are, pretty good. Got some dead needles to get out of there. Just a little TLC spring cleaning. And we're gonna just fill in the rest of the pot. And here is tree number two. Now there's that S curve, formal, informal upright. And here we are down at the base. So I like it. It's got some flaws, of course. I can accept that, <laughs> but you know, it's a pretty tree. We'll get it over on the bench. I'll water these guys later on. The, the roots um, from these flower pots are still very, very damp. Um, so I'm not worried about it drying out or anything. But there you go. White pine. 
here we are with number three. Again, I think these trees have a lot of potential. Pines, evergreens are not my necessarily strongest species to work on, you know. I can admit that to myself. But, you know, I hope to learn more over time. And, and I do think these are really pretty trees and they've got a lot of potential. So I'm still hopeful. I'll keep at it. Let's lift this guy out of the pot and continue on with the process. There's a little test fit in the pot. Pretty. I like this one. So this could have two fronts to it. One of them's here. The bark doesn't exactly come down to the very base of the tree, but it's still a decent front. On the back side, here's what we got. The bark is a little more, uh, it's, it goes down the whole, the whole way to the soil line. And of course the bark is going to fill in over time. So I'm not too worried that one spot doesn't have bark on it because eventually it will. So either way, you can't really go wrong. The tree wants to kind of go to my left this way. So I'm going to put it slightly on the right side of the pot, a little off center so that it kind of leans that way. And uh, so we're going to get the wire in the pot again, anchor it down, fill in the gaps.
And here we are with number three. You have to excuse the airplane flying out for head. So I like this. <clears throat> this has uh, got a lot of potential. One thing that frustrates me, and I sound like a broken record, but around here, the squirrels, let's see if I can, there we go. Oh my gosh, the squirrels chewed these leaves down to little nubbins. <clears throat> Squirrel ate that branch. Squirrel ate that branch. Look, it's still got squirrel hair on it. Freaking drives me nuts. So this year is definitely going to be about how to prevent these squirrels from taking over the place because it gets my blood boiling. Anyway, super pretty, right? I love it. We'll style it at a different time. I really do not know what I'm going to do about the top, but we'll just be patient. It's a learning process. So I'm going to put this over on the bench. I'm going to water all three of them, but I don't want to turn my hose on for fear that we get more freezing weather. Uh, so I'm just going to get a watering can, do it that way. I'll show you in a sec. Here they are on the bench. You know, I like the symmetry of, you know, the same pots, the same mix, same trees. Each of them are, you know, have their own characteristics though and style. But I'm very happy with how that turned out today. I'm gonna go fill up a watering can and give them a little drink. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for checking this out. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to give me any comments, critiques, suggestions in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.